Can I ask you about some of the things that you've brought in? As you say, you started in December. We've seen um, apologies, or you might want to call them acknowledgements in, in your language, to clubs for errors that are being made. Do you think that is the... Are you still convinced that is the right approach? Once you start acknowledging, when do you actually stop? Yeah, I mean, again, we made a commitment at the start of this that we'd have a lot of dialogue with clubs. I've been into most of the Premier League clubs and had really good open conversations and played audio to them like we're doing today and, uh, and acknowledged numerous situations to them, some privately and occasionally publicly when something's really quite egregious, quite, uh, quite, uh, quite obvious, maybe uh, a process error. We had a couple of situations early in the season uh, where you know, the process for VAR wasn't followed quite rightly for whatever reason. So we will acknowledge those publicly on occasion, but there's a lot of dialogue taking place all of the time. We want people to understand, you know, how good our officials are, to understand the rationale. People might not always agree with the final outcome, but I think when they can hear the rationale, they see the process, they're much more prepared to accept the, the final decision in those, in those circumstances. And we've been doing that all the way through. Howard, I've been on a couple of the calls this season where you've played some of these instances in, and what struck me is the professionalism of the communication. And obviously, sometimes integrity of officials are qu a question, but when you see this, you never question the integrity of the official again when you look at some of the communication. Fans need to see this, don't they? We need to see this. Players need to see this. Are you now comfortable? I mean, obviously, you're showing us tonight it's the first time that we've ever seen it. What's it going to take for you to make that decision or the game to make that decision whereby after a game where there's been a controversial incident or there's been something that people don't like, where you just release the footage transparently of the big decisions, the Rashford one, the goal against obviously Manchester City, the Brentford... Yep. Uh, Arsenal won earlier on the season. I'm thinking the two big ones there. If you just put the communication out later on that night, that would probably clear up that it's just genuinely a, 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 an error that's been made, a human error. When will that come in? Can it come in next season so that we can give the fans the benefit of this? We're looking to do this as much as we possibly can. And obviously tonight is, is, is something new. Um, we're making a small step forward. So going forward into next season, we'll be looking to do more of the same. We can't play it live in game. That's not allowed within the laws of the game. FIFA don't allow us to play this out during the game. Who knows where that might go in the future? But there's nothing to stop us doing what we're doing tonight and showing that information later. And I hope tonight's you know, been a good insight as we've drawn that curtain back to, to, to reveal the way that the officials work together as a team, how they communicate, some of the rationale for some of the decisions that have been taken. We've tried to show you a range of situations t uh, tonight. And, um, yeah, going forward, we're looking to do more of the same. Howard, you, I mean, when you start off as a youngster, you're going through the, you know, the levels to be, to be a referee. Obviously, then VAR comes in the last couple of years. How do you decide when, what referee you would put on a certain game, who you put on VAR? Is it fair to say certain officials are not as good in the VAR hub as, as other ones? Do you have to take that into account when you're sort of picking maybe who does what games? Yeah, we, we obviously look at people in training. Um, some of our very best referees are not used as VAR that often because not always are the skills transferable. We get some uh, officials who are really excellent in the, in the VAR role and can think clearly and communicate quickly and are decisive. So again, there's some transferable skills, but not always. So we, you know, we watch people in training, we see how they perform in the games. And of course, the ones who are the best at it are going to get the most, the most appointments um, and you know, experience comes into it as well, whether we're selecting somebody for, for the field or somebody in the, in the VAR booth. We look at how well they're able to perform that job, their levels of experience, the error rates, and all that sort of thing comes into the decision. We want to make sure we put the right people onto the right game due to their levels of experience and their current form.